I'm Steph. Uh, welcome. Thank you so much for joining us today. I'm the project manager at the Canadian Apprenticeship Forum. As most of you are members, you probably know what we do and are very familiar with us. But for those who are new in the room, I'll just let you know a little bit about what we do. So CAF is a not-for-profit organization that connects Canada's apprenticeship community. So participants of CAF uh, work collaboratively to support vibrant and innovative apprenticeship systems and policies with a view to developing highly skilled, inclusive, and mobile skilled trades skilled trades workforce. Uh, so just before we get started, I would like to take just a moment uh, to do a land acknowledgement, and I'll be doing it from the London, Ontario community, which is where I'm currently located. So we'd like to take a moment to acknowledge that we are gathered today on the traditional lands of the Anishinaabek, Haudenosaunee, Leonapewak, and Attawandaran peoples on lands connected with the London Township and Sombra Treaties of 1796 and the Dish with One Spoon Covenant Wampum. This land continues to be home to diverse Indigenous peoples, including First Nations, Métis, and Inuit, whom we recognize as contemporary stewards of the land and vital contributors of our society. Additionally, there's a growing Indigenous population who make the City of London home. We value the significant historical and contemporary contributions of local and regional First Nations of Turtle Island. So today we're here to learn about uh, the Canadian Apprenticeship Forum and Partners uh, Canadian Apprenticeship Service. So this is a federally funded program through ESDC. It will be launching on uh, Tuesday, September 20th. And uh, so just a couple days from now, our version anyway, will be launching then. And we'll continue until March 31st of 2024. Okay, so the Canadian Apprenticeship Forum has chosen to partner with five other organizations. Not all of the, the programs that are doing this across the country have a number of different partners, but we chose to work with industry leading experts who bring a great deal of value to the team and who are just exceptional at what they do. So just to let you know, the Canadian Apprenticeship Forum and Partners is not the only uh, program in Canada. There are about 13 of us. So I will be telling you just about our program today. Uh, we have chosen to partner with the Aboriginal Apprenticeship Board, uh, the Canadian Construction Association, Build Force Canada, Skill Plan and ApprenticeSearch.com. So I'll tell you just a little bit about we, what each of our partners will be doing. The Aboriginal Apprenticeship Board is going to be working with us to do advertising to um, equity deserving groups, specifically Indigenous people. So we do want to be sure that we're getting this information to communities across Canada, and they'll be helping to get that information out to Indigenous communities. The Canadian Construction Association is working with us not only to do a fantastic media campaign that we're really excited about, but also to, uh, to ensure that any of the construction associations across the country are aware of this program. Build Force Canada and Skill Plan will be providing the training that's associated with this program. And we'll be going over that in just a couple of slides. We'll let you know the exciting training possibilities that are a part of our program. And ApprenticeSearch.com is carrying the bulk of all of the uh, all of the customer service pieces. So ApprenticeSearch.com will be doing the registration for both the employers and the apprentices. And additionally, they provide a really exciting, exclusive apprentice and employer matching program. So part of what we make available is if an employer say doesn't have an apprentice, but they would like to, they can use our matching service to get connected with a candidate in their area in their skill or their trade. So just to tell you a little bit more about the program, if you're an employer with less than 500 paid employees, so 499 or less, you're eligible to receive $5,000 per apprentice that you hire through this program. There are 39 trades that are eligible within this program, and we'll go over that in a minute, um, but you can have $5,000 to help offset the cost of onboarding a new person. So, you know, there's a little bit of mentor time, there's training time, there's just some costs associated uh, with hiring a new person. So this is to offset some of that for the employer. If you were to hire a person who's from an equity deserving group, and we're gonna go over that in just a second, you would receive $10,000 to help with some additional supports that you may need to have. So what we're classifying for this program as a small and medium enterprise is up to 499 employees. You're able to hire two new level one um, apprentices per fiscal year. 
a fiscal year runs from April 1st until March 31st of the next year. So between September and March 31st of 2023, you could have two apprentices and then two more the following year. Okay, I'm not gonna do this math for you. I'm sure you can follow this, but um, just to let you know, if you were to hire four apprentices over the course of the program and each of them was from an equity deserving group, you could receive $40,000 for, uh, for the program. So fairly substantial to help offset some of those initial hiring costs. So the equity deserving groups include women, indigenous peoples, newcomers, persons with disabilities, visible minorities and folks within the LGBTQ2 plus community. If you want any further definition of what's included in each of these groups in terms of how ESDC is defining the groups, that information is available and I'm happy to share those descriptions with you if you'd like to have them. I'm not going to read you all of the construction trades. Uh, you will be getting an information package after this session that will include just a little bit of information about uh, the program itself, all of the trades, and then there is an employer FAQ as well that I'll include in that information package so that you've, uh, you've got that information. But I do just wanna point out within the construction trades, we have housed landscape horticulturalists. So for those of you that are within the landscaping industry, know that a uh, landscape horticulturalist is one of the eligible trades. Here are the manufacturing trades. Uh, another note is that you may see a couple of trades that transfer between the two industries. So for example, cabinet maker, you'll also see within construction. It's not listed there, but certainly um, a cabinet maker in either manufacturing or construction would be eligible. Uh, same with millwright. So let's go over some of the additional benefits for employers. So through our program, and this is specific to the CAF and Partners program. So some of the other programs across the country will have the same in terms of the $5,000 is the same, uh, the $10,000 is the same, the equity deserving groups are the same, the duration of the program is the same, but not all of us have some of these extra pieces. So what's a little bit uh, different and, uh, and an additional benefit through the, uh, the CAF and Partners program is we've got access to that complimentary matching service that I was telling you a little about from apprenticeship. Uh, so this would be if you're an employer or an apprentice and you're looking to get matched with, uh, with either a candidate or an employer, you can go through our apprentice search program. And of course it's complimentary uh, to find each other. Okay, we also, I'm gonna skip the mentorship course for just a sec, we'll come back to that. We also have complimentary training in several other areas just to help supplement some of that initial onboarding and some of that initial kind of HR piece around training. So we do have working in a respectful workplace available. We've got understanding systemic racism and we've got construction ethics. So those can help in that beginning when you're, when you're doing some of that onboarding piece. Uh, we also have complementary essential skills training for apprentices. So, you know, sometimes you might have an apprentice who perhaps has difficulty with ratios or measurements or conversions or some of the math that might be included in their trade. And, uh, and what we have through Skill Plan is a program that allows for apprentices to do some upgrading of their skills and to get just a little bit more comfortable and confident with some of the math specifically. Uh, so we do, we do have a lot of opportunity there for growth for apprentices. All of that's complimentary. Okay, and now we'll go back to the mentorship course. So as part of our program, we do have one required piece of training that is, uh, is mandatory to complete prior to receiving the funds. And that's our introduction to mentorship course. So our introduction to mentorship course is a research-based program that has identified six competencies that, uh, that we feel are essential for mentors to be effective within that initial onboarding process. And this is provided through both Build Force Canada and Skill Plan. It's about three hours long, it's online. Um, there is a piece of it for the journey person. So they'll have their own mentorship or their mentor if it's not a journey person. So they will have the one three hour program designated to them and it's about, it's about the six competencies. On the flip side of that, there's also about, it's about a three hour program for the apprentices. And this is to match some of the competencies of the mentor, but from a question asking perspective. 
So how do I ask good questions? How do I make the most out of my training? You know, how do I ask for support if I need it and I'm not really super comfortable asking for it? So this is just to ensure that we're equipping both the apprentice and the mentor with any of those fundamental skills that might be really helpful in that initial onboarding piece. In addition to the mentorship course, we also have an app that I think is so cool. So, uh, so we have this mentorship app that's been developed by, uh, by Build Course and Skill Plan, and it ultimately goes through the competencies of each of the trades. So the apprentice, as they're kind of working, are able to check off competencies that they've completed along with their mentor. It provides a forum for them to communicate with each other. The apprentice can also upload photos to get um, just a little bit of feedback from their mentor, especially if the mentor is not in person with them, say one day. Uh, they could also have access to additional mentors. So if an apprentice wants to ask about a specific skill that perhaps their mentor doesn't have, they could ask an additional person. So lots of good stuff included in this app. What I like about it too, is it provides a form to ask questions electronically if you're someone who's not particularly comfortable asking for feedback in person. So I think, uh, I think that's pretty cool. So those are our additional benefits that are available through our program. They are sort of specific to, uh, to CAP. Okay, so let's talk about how we're going to apply. If I wanted to do this program, how would I do that? The first thing you're gonna do is you're gonna go to apprenticesearch.com slash CAS to register. There is going to be a little bit of a registration page. We're going to take some information just about, you know, the name of your company, the size of your company. We need to verify that it's 499 or less. Uh, by verify, I mean, we're just going to ask you to write down the size of your company. Okay. Um, there's also going to be a completed sub-agreement. And what that is, is an agreement with CAF to say, I'm only going to work with CAF during the time that I'm using this program. There is, a, there is a stipulation through our funder that you can only work with one program at a time. So uh, you wouldn't be able to work with us, for example, and another funder, uh, BCCA, for example, in BC. So you would need to choose kind of one of us. Um, in, within the subagreement is also just an agreement to ensure that your mentor and your apprentice uh, complete their programming. And then lastly, there are some just stipulations around um, making sure that, uh, that uh, you are training and hiring uh, your apprentice. Uh, we also need an EFT document. So the way that the funds are distributed are that we um, pay through direct deposit. So we're just gonna be asking you for um, the EFT to make sure we're able to provide you with the funding. And then lastly, and this comes after you register with us. So a very important note, is that before you register your apprentice, you do need to register with the program because it's not retroactive. It's only a move forward program. So, uh, so once you've registered with us, you would then provide a copy of the training agreement with your jurisdictional authority. In Ontario, it's called an RTA, a registered training agreement. In other provinces and territories, it may have a different name, but this is ultimately the document that shows that you have registered this person as your apprentice. So we'll just need to collect that from you or like a copy of that from you. Once that piece is done, um, you will then register your apprentice with us. So once you're kind of done registering as an employer, you'll get your apprentice to go on to apprenticesearch.com. They're going to register as well. Not a ton of information. We're really just asking for their name, the name of the company, the trade they're in, I think the area of Canada. And then we will ask some of those questions around whether or not they belong to an equity deserving group. And they will voluntarily self-disclose whether or not they're a part of a group. Um, so that part does happen separately from your registration as an employer. We'll be getting that information directly from the apprentice, uh, which will help us to determine if it's a $5,000 grant or a $10,000 grant. Once the two of you are registered, we are then going to send a pin to both the journey person or mentor, if it's not a journey person, and the apprentice. So we'll take care of that piece. We'll send the pins to do the training directly to them. Uh, we'll also provide troubleshooting if the apprentice or the mentor has any difficulty with the training process. We'll also do little nudges if they're having a bit of a hard time getting started or if they just need reminders to make sure that they complete the training. We'll take care of that piece as well. And then as soon as they're done the training, I'm able to release the funds. So as soon as I hear from Build Force and Skill Plan that your folks have completed their part, uh, I'm able to send the funds to you. So it's actually, it's a fairly straightforward 
process, um, and it can happen very quickly depending on how how fast your uh, your apprentice and your mentor are able to go through their training. But again, it should be around three hours, and they can do it anytime because it's online. So to get in contact with us, uh, we've got our phone number on there, and again, all of the registration gets started at apprenticesearch.com slash cast. Registration will open on Tuesday, September 20th. So coming up in just a few days, we're getting ready to go. And again, these are our project partners. So CAF's responsibility is uh, largely to communicate with the funder and also to just do events like this to make sure everyone's aware of the program and also to make sure our partners have what they need to be able to do uh, to do their parts.